Ah. So we are in the new abnormal. My name is uh, Robert Rosner. I'm a professor of astrophysics and physics uh, and the uh, Harris School of Public Policy at the University of Chicago. I'm the chair of the Science and Security Board and uh, I think it's fair to say that um, one of my jobs as chair is to hurt a lot of cats. The folks that are on the Science and Security Board range from uh, climate scientists uh, to um, uh, physicists with expertise in nuclear matters uh, to uh, social scientists, political scientists uh, that have a history of dealing with um, nuclear issues, with climate issues, in general with diplomatic issues, and it contains some generalists. What they all share is a quantitative view of the world. They, they share a, a, uh, a deep belief in facts, that, we, that when we think about the world that we should deal with facts. So it's two minutes before midnight. And that was uh, decided last year. And that's as close as the minute hand has been to 12 midnight uh, ever. So it was like that uh, during the Eisenhower administration, uh, just past the time when the Russians uh, tested their thermonuclear device, their first hydrogen bomb. Things that had, where you saw hints of developing a year ago, now these things are beca becoming obvious that they're being carried out. Uh, in particular, uh, the, um, what is called the modernization program of the nuclear, uh, nuclear forces, uh, which uh, when you look in detail of what it actually means, it means essentially rebuilding the entire nuclear complex, number one. Uh, number two is uh, developing uh, new weapons contrary to what we've been saying in the past. means retreating from the uh, from, uh, treaty obligations that we have that barred the use of tactical nukes or intermediate range uh, nuclear weapons. And uh, while it is the case that um, uh, we have in the past, under previous administrations, accused the Russians of having actually violated some of those treaties, uh, for us to respond by also violating them is probably not the sensible thing to do because then we will be back to the 1950s and an arms race. The indications that we have a serious problem are becoming more and more dire. The IPCC, which had already given a warning in the fifth assessment that it's time to really do something, uh, came out with a, a, a new interim uh, document that basically said guess what, uh, the predictions that we made uh, a few years ago uh, were actually on the conservative side and things are uh, going worse than we had expected. And it's something that definitely has gone into our thinking about what to do about the minute hand. It is truly that we've arrived at a new abnormal, not just in the nuclear area, but also in the climate area. It's a really a sobering moment. Another issue that we've been paying more and more attention to, which is that um, changes in the way that we communicate, in particular, uh, the modern uh, internet has given rise to, the, uh, to an entirely new way in which um, ordinary folks get their information. And a, an average person has a very great deal of difficulty in distinguishing what's reliable from what's unreliable. And we're seeing this in so many different ways, not just in the obvious political battles. Clever people can take advantage of this kind of confusion. The, the key thing about science is that um, it's about facts. And that the, the science is an intensely self-regulatory discipline. Uh, if you want to make things up, you will be found out. If you make a mistake, you will be found out. If you misstate things, you will be found out eventually. There are not many human endeavors where that's true, but science is one such endeavor, and that's its value. And I think putting science in support of the kinds of things where we have great difficulty in 
telling truth from fiction. Um, I think I think that's a really good thing to do, and I think that's that is the reason why I think the bulletin is such such a big deal is because it uses science to discuss some of the most difficult things that we have, the things that challenge us to stay human, to stay to basically to have a planet that's livable. And the new abnormal, what that means is that it's a time for reflection that we really, really do not want to be here. We really don't want to be here. I, I recall that when we first talked about this, I had called this new normal, which is bad. And I was corrected by one of the members of, uh, uh, of the Science Security Board. It's not normal. It's abnormal. We are teetering at a precipice, and we don't want to be there. And the two minutes before midnight, the closest we've been to midnight, should tell us, let's figure out a way of getting back from the precipice. Let's move away from midnight.